Hello and welcome back to Trigger Smart. I am out here at the range. I hope you guys appreciate this because it is freezing out here and I'm going to be doing some testing. I'm going to be shooting, but here's the interesting part. I'm testing frangible ammo. So I had my source at an 10 Jacques. I had him go out and check and see if he could find some frangible ammo. He was not able to find 30 out six frangible. There are World War II like stockpiles of it and stuff like that. And there are some very rare companies that make it that you might be able to source. But he has a FFL and a business that regularly sources this stuff. And he couldn't find anything except 556. So today I'm shooting 556 frangible ammo. And we're going to be hitting several things. We're going to be testing on the rubber mat material. We're going to be looking at obviously our fruit, our water, cinder blocks, wood, and then of course our steel. Now typically we are going to expect that any hard surface like the cinder block and the steel are going to work properly with the frangible ammo. The real question is, is it going to work when we hit something softer? I also got some pork shoulders to test it out. They're about the size of a human neck for most people. And then I got this nice chunky ribeye over here. And I apologize for the shooting in the background if it's loud. But I have this nice ribeye here with a chunky bone in it. And we're going to see if we can get that frangible ammo to break on it. All right, guys, here we go. So I'm going to be shooting all these different items. Some are going to be with full metal jacket first of each item. And then we're going to do frangible rounds of Fioshis each item. And then after we're done, then obviously we're going to compare the damage and that kind of stuff. The thing that's interesting is that based on the research that I've done, these frangible rounds will probably pass through just about everything, except maybe the cinder block and the steel. I'm actually really curious if it's going to stop in that bone on that beef, but we'll find out. And I'm shooting my 10.5 Stag Arms, has the Velo Suppressor, and then of course we have our full metal jacket and our frangible rounds here. And we're going to start off with steel. With non-frangible full metal jacket. And wood, full metal jacket. All right, now we're switching over to frangible. And we're gonna shoot the steel first. And then we're gonna shoot frangible at the wood. All right, next we're gonna shoot at the infinity target. And that is the rubber mat material. And I highly recommend their targets. They're pretty awesome, but we're gonna see if the frangible acts any different. So we're gonna shoot full metal jacket first, 55 grain. Now frangible. Now I can see from here, the frangible rounds started breaking up more in this more paint splatter but I'm not sure if that's gonna make a difference as far as the uh, damage and stuff like that that actually happened, but let's go check it out. And I know you guys are probably jealous of how awesome I look. All right, so first, if you can see this here, this hit right here, this was the full metal jacket, and this hit right here, that's your frangible. So you can see some of the powder and stuff that came off of that. And then we come over here to the wood, this one right here, that's the full metal jacket, and that one there, that's the frangible. Let's check the back. And as you can see, they both came through. Frangible went right through the wood, no issues. And here was the full metal jacket here, and then the frangible here. And based on that hole, it looks like it just went straight through. There was no breaking up or anything when it hit that hard rubber. All right, so this is the fun part where I get to test my accuracy and uh, see if I don't destroy my own cameras. So we're gonna start off with full metal jacket on the left. So everything that I shoot right now is gonna be full metal jacket on the left side. Let's see how it goes. Cantaloupe. Pretty uneventful. All right, now let's go ahead and do our pineapple. All right, and now let's do the water. Okay, a little bit more eventful. Now, there are some benefits of frangible when it comes to home defense as well. Not, you know, for over penetration and that kind of stuff, but some people say that it's not as effective. All right, now we're going to go to frangible on the right side. First, we're going to do our cantaloupe. Pineapple.
And next we're gonna go to our water bottle. All right, let's clear and check it out. I'm shooting at about 50 yards. So my first impressions is that the full metal jacket did not cause as much damage as the frangible, but let's check this out. All right, so let's look at our entrance. This is with the full metal jacket. So pretty clean, pretty clean going in. That's our exit, right? That's that cavitation and that exit wound people talk about. All right, next we have our pineapple. It's kind of hard to see there, but there's your entrance right there, right here. And again, this is full metal jacket. There's your exit, right? Pretty obvious. A lot of damage blown out the back. And the water bottle, you can kind of see the whole clean hole there. And then the back, of course, is blown out. Made a big mess. All right, now we're gonna look at the frangible side. So what's interesting, on the frangible, this is the entry wound. So definitely bigger, split it open, but now look at the exit. Almost identical. So that exit is almost identical. Then you have your pineapple, and now on this one you can see that entry wound is bigger on the frangible. So it was already breaking up when it hit. Now I can't see any obvious residue or anything. I can't see any powder. Now look at the exit, right? Pretty blown out. But again, I don't see any powder or anything. You know, I'm looking in the wound and I don't see, I don't see any traces of it like exploding into a powder and I don't see any on the table. And then of course we have our pretty clean entry and broke it out the back just like the other one. Okay, so now you saw what happens with the fruit, the steel, the rubber, and the water jugs and that kind of stuff. But now let's compare this to actual flesh and see if we can kind of replicate what may have happened and see if we can get, especially on the bone-in beef, see if we can get that to actually stop the frangible round and not have it blow the back out. But now we need to test out this frangible round on flesh because if they're saying that it was a 30-06 frangible round, we need to see if any frangible round would work. And in this case, it is 5.56, not exactly one-to-one -one with 30 out six, but it's the same idea. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a pork roast, and some of you are gonna say, why is the plastic still on it? Well, to me, that's almost kind of functioning like the skin, right? And uh, plastic, obviously, tears and rips pretty easily when it's shot. So I wanna kind of simulate how the skin kind of holds things together, right? It is elastic, it has some give, but I left that on for that reason. And then after that, we're gonna shoot our roast that has a bone. And first we're gonna shoot full metal jacket at the left pork roast. Now we're gonna shoot frangible pork roast. All right, let's go check it out. By the way, this frangible ammo is a dollar a round. All right, now remember, some of you were saying that it could have been like a 556 five, closer or some kind of pistol round or something. And uh, I mean, look at this. All right, now this goes to show you what people are talking about when you can barely find or never see an entry wound. Look at that. See the little plastic right there? That tiny little hole right there, right above my thumb. That's the entry. You can barely see it, all right? That's your exit. And you can see in this case, obviously there's some cinder block in it because the cinder block was right behind it. Blew that out. Now that's just with 5.56. That's not even a 30 out 6, which is significantly more powerful, all right? Now, look at the cinder block. Went straight through the front. Now let's see if it went through the back. Shattered the whole thing. Okay, now looking inside, you can see it destroyed everything, but it looks like it did not go all the way through. So it didn't go through the back, but it did crack the back. Okay, all right. Now we're looking at frangible, and you can see similarly, very, very small entry wound. Now remember, these are like 22 size bullets because it's 5.56, 223, but very small on the inside. Let's see how the back looks. All right, now on the back of this, you can see it's still blown out. 
and there is some concrete from the center block in it but you can see it's still blew it out so you would definitely see an exit wound and then on this one it did not go through the cinder block. It didn't even crack the cinder block, but it did take this chunk out here, right? But the frangible bullet has broken up down here. And you can actually see some pieces of it there. The frangible, when it hits something hard, it did break up. So now we're going to test it on this beef with the bone in it and see what happens. All right, now here's the grand finale. Is this 556 frangible ammo? that we saw break up on the concrete block. Is that gonna hit the bone after going through the flesh that's about the same thickness as a human neck? And is it going to kind of break and explode on impact? Or is it just gonna shatter the bone and then hit the block behind it? You're gonna say this looks pretty thin and weak. Well, from the side, look at the thickness. That's about the same as those pork roasts, about the same as a human neck. So I'm gonna shoot right through the lower part of it and it's gonna hit that bone in the back. And what we're trying to see is is it gonna go through the flesh and stop at the bone with the frangible round? Or is it gonna go through and hit the cinder block? And if you guys appreciate me doing this in the freezing cold, not like Jesse in heavy duty country wearing tank tops out in Texas, hit that like button. Look like a pretty good shot. All right, make sure we're clear. All right, so here's what we have. Pretty sizable entry hole. Some pretty good damage, nice wound cavity. Come on the other side, and I that was a pretty direct hit, right? That went straight through that bone. Blew out the side and went straight through the bone. And it wasn't a edge shot, right? So the hole is actually closer to the middle. And you can see that bone that's thicker than human vertebrae went right through it, blew it out. And it also made another big chunk out of that cinder block. All right, so what's the takeaway here? Well, we shot just about everything you could think of, hard and soft. Obviously, we have to look at the slow-mo, but I mean, frangible ammo, 5.56223 has less power, less foot pounds of force hitting. It can be a fast round and it is smaller, but in this case, it went straight through, straight through the bone, everything else. So I would say, even with the frangible 30 out six, that has significantly more power at the 140 yards. I would say frangible is not going to make a difference. It's still going to blow his neck out. As always, guys, like, subscribe, and share this around. And I'll see you on the next one.